Hi, Rob Foxall, SCS Spreader and Sprayer Testing Limited. Today we're going to talk through how to test slug pelleter. Um, check the machine through, have a look at the pellets and then do a tray test to ensure that we've got even application across your spread width. So, slug pellets. Four characteristics that affect the spreadability. We have weight, size, strength and shape. Shape we can't measure, but the first three we can. So if we start with the, with the weight, so the bulk density, litre tube, fill it up, remember to deduct the weight of the cylinder, that will then give us our bulk density. Second one we'll do is the size. So fill our grader box and then riffle it through, shake it through, make sure that all the pellets have got through to the, to the size that they are, turn it the right way up. We can then read on there what size pellets we've got. Obviously if all the pellets were in section A, less than 2 mil, that restricts how far we can throw. Obviously the smaller they are, the less they will throw. Obviously if we've got everything in section D, such as a, a big fertiliser, then that will throw a lot further than a smaller pellet. The third one that we can measure is our strength. So we'll use the strength indicator and push strength of 8. And that would, that would be where we'd expect the pellets to be. Good strong pellet so it will withstand a lot of force as the disc comes round with the vein and gives it a whack so we can propel that to a decent width. Okay, slug pelleter mounted on a quad bike, most common outfit that we see on farm. Um, first off, let's make sure the machine is mounted securely. Brackets on the side, make sure they're tight on either side. Just have a general look round, make sure the machine isn't going to fall off as you're doing the test. Next up, let's have a look at the hopper itself. So lid on top, make sure that's got its correct fastenings. Whilst we've got the hopper off, we'll have a look inside and make sure that the agitator in the bottom of the little bar, make sure that's intact. Next thing that we'd look at is the height of the machine. This instance, about 110 centimetres. Obviously we have to bear in mind that when the operator gets on, the machine may well tip backwards. So there is an adjustment on the front where we can tilt the machine up so that it throws the pellets a bit further to allow for somebody jumping on the machine and making it sit back. So don't just look at the machine now with nobody on it, make sure you check it with the operator on. The most vital part of the machine is obviously the disc with the veins on. Let's get down, have a look, make sure that the veins are on, that they're not bent, that they're not worn through if they're the old plastic type. Make sure the disc isn't warped. So next thing we'd do, we'd start the quad bike, motor running, and then put the disc into gear and then take a reading with our tachometer to check our disc speed. Target disc speed for this machine under no load should be about 3,500 RPM. Okay, to set the rate, we have the scale on the back here. We release the fastener at the front and we should be able to slide the rate plate backwards forwards. Now, it's possible broken pellets, bits of mud, damp from when we've been spreading have built up inside and it may be that you need to clean this off. Before we do the tray test, we need to set the machine the application rate and for the spread width. So the rate we will set with the adjuster at the front here. So depending what we're going up, three kilograms, five kilograms per hectare. We will also set the bias of the machine depending upon the spread pattern. So if we adjust the bias, we can move the pallet pattern from one side to the other. So we set it at number 90, which is the standard setting, lock it off. We will now do a tray test through and see if we've got a balance pattern left to right. Our quad bike is going to do one drive through. We've set our trays out 12 metres either side for a 12 metre pattern. He'll drive through once, we will then count the pellets in the trays. When we get to the halfway point, we will fold the outside of the pattern back on the inside to replicate driving the far tram line. So we fold the two sides in, we should have approximately the same number of pellets across the 12 metre spread, which is 6 metres either side. So now we will count the pellets, we'll record it on the iPad, then we'll work our way along until we've got the full pattern recorded and then we will have a look at what sort of spread we've got. Okay, so we've counted all our pellets, we've now got the results on the iPad, adding the left side and the right side independently. The left hand side has more pellets than the right, we're not within the 15% for the NSTS standard, so we will adjust the bias of the machine to bring the pellets back to the right hand side, we'll lock it off again and we'll do another run through, count the pellets again, repeat the procedure until we get a nice even level pattern left to right. 
Okay, so we've been through the trays a number of times now. We've got a nice even pattern. We're fairly level left hand to right hand. We're within the 15% for the NSTS, and that's our test. Away you go. Happy day spreading.